Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassey, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's another big day here at Pac-14 because the nicest person that I know, Bonnie Luna, is with us here today. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you, Greg. Bonnie, I have to tell you, I, I encounter a lot of people in my job and a lot of people make me angry. And when I start to get angry back, I remember you and what a nice person you are. And I do a, <laughs> what would Bonnie do? And I calm down. And I'm patient, and I listen, and I just want to thank you publicly for being that part of my psyche. I just, you're so terrific. Thank you. Well, I know I'm that not, embarrasses I'm you. Say, I'm not going to say a thing to, to dispute that. Just keep, keep that image. <laughs> this is your big time of year. What do you got going on right now? Uh, this is an exciting time of the year for us, Greg, because we have the Magi Choral Festival coming up on Saturday, November the 18th and Sunday, November the 19th. It's an exciting year for us because we're doing a patriotic Christmas, which allows patriotic. us... Patriotic? Yes. So we're going to combine a little bit of patriotism and a whole lot of Christmas. Well, we uh, need that lately. It, yes. Yeah. Gives us an opportunity to honor our country and the men and women who serve and at the same time prepare for the holiday season. Well, wow. Christmas and holidays and patriotism, all that's really cool. Yes. Now, this is a, it's a, a Saturday and Sunday event, and it's at Why High. Yes. As I said, Saturday, November the uh, 18th right. at 7 p.m. And again on Sunday, November the 19th at 2 p.m. Everything happens at Wicomico High School Auditorium. That's on Glen Avenue here in Salisbury. And as we have done in the past years, we will have the National Christian Choir with us. Greg, you know, this group is so phenomenal. And for the listening audience who might not have ever had the opportunity to see them, they can just think Mormon Tabernacle Choir because that's the quality of choir that we're bringing in here with the National Christian Choir. It's about 160 members of that choir. And then, of course, we have our Magi Children's Choir, which are made up of youngsters from right here in the uh, Salisbury area. They're from the public schools, a lot of public schools uh, participating. We have private schools, Christian schools, there are homeschool kids. Those children all come together and prepare uh, for the concert. We call them the Magi Children's Choir. They are angelic. And if for no other reason to come out to the Choral Festival, folks need to come experience uh, a time with those children. Their excitement and enthusiasm, but their talent is They really fabulous. are. And when they yes. sing with the National Christian Choir, when they all sing together, it's a... Uh, it's hard not to tear up. I mean, it's amazing. Absolutely. Well, I, d I tear up every year. I cannot <laughs> help myself. But also, it's amazing the people that leave uh, after performance saying, I just couldn't help it. I cried through that whole uh, segment, particularly uh, the uh, finale is spectacular, both visually and... The uh, colors. I'm colorblind, but I can see colors going on up there. <laughs> oh, it's, it's wonderful. So this is a year that no one should miss the Magi Choral Festival because it is going to be a very special time for us. Uh, it does really set the stage for the holiday. People tell us that all the time. So if somebody's having a little struggle with enjoying the holidays, they just need to come out to Why High. That's me. I struggle with it every year. But it's also the weekend before Thanksgiving. So it's like one of those weekends where there's not a lot going on because right. so much is about to happen. So socially, it's not a big weekend. So it's that weekend before Thanksgiving when there's not a lot going on. And it's that perfect time. There's no social commitments because everything's about to happen. So it's a great time to get out there and see this. You're absolutely right, Greg. It's a perfect time to come out to uh, Wyoming High School. Just enjoy and relax for a few hours and let uh, the music that is presented prepare you for the holiday season. It will make you very thankful, so you'll be in the right state of mind for Thanksgiving and definitely for the Christmas holiday. But the patriotism that, we will, that will be on display, uh, we really need to reflect uh, on what a great country we live in and the 
sacrifice that our men and women in the military are making and those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. It's just a special time. So this is the year. Right. It's weird, the whole patriotism thing. It's like gotten a bad rap lately because uh, it's all mixed up with the stuff with the football players and everything. Um, but I think people can see through that. I hope they do about what's going on with all that. But still, I, I love a good dose of it every now and then. It just reminds me of who I am and who we are. Well, if you're anything like me, there's one song that you cannot... Uh, Stars and Stripes Forever. I can't, I can't, I, it's my favorite song in the world. And uh, the battle hymn. I, I love it's that just as well. So exciting! I can hit all those notes when I sing it. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Maybe you could join the choir this year. And then we have a sort of a tradition with the Hallelujah Chorus, the National Christian Choir does right. that, and that's always spectacular. So yeah. Uh, now you know, in addition to buying a ticket for fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars, it's very yeah. reasonable price for what you're getting. Certainly, if they buy their tickets before November the tenth. Correct. Uh, but we also ask people to bring a canned goods. So we do a food collection, which is divided equally between Joseph House Center and Christian Shelter. A uh, couple thousand cans of food uh, that help stock those pantries. But what's really important for us to say here today, Greg, is that um, when somebody purchases a ticket and comes to the concert, they're going to be so blessed. And the, the music, everything about it is just wonderful. But what they really need to take home is that they've made an investment in the life of an individual who is homeless or impoverished here in the community. Because everything we do, we do it for Joseph House Center and Christian Shelter. We are fundraising for those two organizations so that they can provide the services uh, needed for uh, the impoverished and the homeless here in the community. They are wonderful organizations. So it's, it's an investment in the life of someone who has a great need. And it gives us an opportunity to be able to help those individuals. I'm told that the National Christian Choir, basically the only reason they come down here is because they like us. They absolutely <laughs> love Salisbury. They think it's one of the greatest places on earth. They have made a commitment to uh, the Magi Fund and our efforts to raise funds for the Christian Shelter and Joseph House Center. But they tell us this is the highlight of their year. They prepare all year for their journey down to Salisbury. And you know what's really wonderful? Is this organization does not get paid for coming over here. Mm. So everything they're doing, they are giving to us. Uh, come, many of them pay for their, uh, their overnight accommodations on Saturday night. Uh, many folks here in Salisbury open up their homes uh, as host homes and they take National Christian Choir members into their homes uh, for Saturday night. Uh, on Sunday morning there's something absolutely fabulous that happens because the first year that the National Christian Choir came over to Salisbury they wanted uh, to worship together and there really was no church that could accommodate 180 plus individuals right. on any given Sunday morning along with their own congregations. So we decided that uh, we would have an ecumenical worship service right at Y High in the auditorium at 1030 on Sunday morning so that the National Christian Choir could worship together. We made it a public uh, event so it's open to the public. So every year since they started coming, we've been having a traditional worship service at Y High, 1030 on Sunday morning. The first year they came, they took up a collection, as would be done in any church service. And right. I assumed that that would be for them. For them. For them, because after all, that would be their, right. for uh, an opportunity for us to thank them for their uh, sacrifice of coming over. Right. So what happened was at the end of the uh, worship service, they counted the money. And during the Sunday afternoon concert, they surprised the Magi Fund by giving that uh, offering back to uh, the Magi Fund for Joseph House and Christian Shelter. Wow. They've been doing it every year, and last year the offering was over $10,000. Most every bit of it comes from the uh, members of the National Christian Choir. Well, now you mentioned the word surprise. Uh, two, three years ago, you were the surprise winner of the Salisbury Award. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? They came to the concert and gave you the big award, and you had no idea it was coming. They, they hadn't given it in a while, in fact, I don't think, and uh, then they brought it back with you. That was an amazing uh, event, yes. And you it, tried to deflect all the credit away from you and put it on the, the Magi, but it's, it, no, it was you. No, the, it, the Magi <laughs> fund got the Salisbury Award. And so, Greg, you know what? Over the 24 years that we've been in existence, truly, there are thousands of individuals, when we think of all the children that have 
performed in the Magi Children's Choir. Early on, we did an adult choir. Uh, and then all the individuals that have just come along beside us and volunteered, thousands of individuals in this community have been involved in the Magi Fund and the Magi Choral Festival. So the Salisbury Award really does belong to every individual that's ever done anything with the Magi Fund. It's, um, it is an organization of thousands of people and it belongs to the community. I just love the photos from that presentation because you have that look on your face of like, what is going on? <laughs> What, why am I here? What happened? Yes, actually, I, I could not figure out why we were disrupting the concert. I mean, we just don't do that. So, yes, but what, a, what an amazing honor uh, to receive that award because the two people that, um, that I admire most were recipients of the Salisbury Award, and those were Sister Mary Elizabeth and David Greer. Uh, so uh, it really was very humbling and just such a huge honor. Let's talk about her for a minute, Sister Mary Elizabeth. I, I miss her a lot, and I actually go out to Parsons and eat my lunch sometime uh, on, the, on the lake there, and her, her grave site is there. And I, I think of Sister Mary Elizabeth all the time and how she had a calming influence on me and how she was able to explain things to me. Like I used to think, well, why don't poor people just get jobs, you know? <laughs> and you know, I had sort of that right-wing attitude about everything, and she was so gentle with me and explained things and um, I just, I, she was a great, very great influence and I miss her a lot. I know she was a big influence on you. Absolutely. She uh, was probably one of the greatest blessings in my life. She and Virginia Layfield and, and Virginia was one of the founding members of the Magi Fund. Yeah, um, and just that our community got to have the uh, little sisters like that um, just how lucky we were. Yeah, Sister Mary Elizabeth still lives on in our hearts and the impact that she had on this community continues today. Uh, her legacy is one that is to be really admired and emulated. I, I just happened to be covering the county council when she first came to town and she said they were going to open the shelter up and the council members were like, well that's fine if you want but we don't have any real poor people or homeless people here and the day they opened the shelter there was a line down the street. <laughs> So the politicians did not understand what was going on in their own community, right. but Sister Mary Elizabeth and the Little Sisters definitely had a focus on what was going on. She was one person that I can say really heard the voice of God. When he spoke to her, she, uh, she heard it and she responded. Yeah. And Christian Shelter, another great organization. Tell me about yeah. that. Christian Shelter, of course, has been in existence for, what, 30 years now, I believe. And an amazing work uh, started by David Greer and other individuals here in the community. They have continued for all these years housing. Initially, uh, Greg, it was uh, homeless men, homeless women. Right. But in the more recent years, the greater emphasis uh, is on families. Uh, the number of families that are coming to the door of Christian shelters growing every year. So right now, the greatest population in the shelter our families, men, women with children, some just women with children. They still house single women and single men, but the majority of those that they're trying to help are families. And when you think about the difficulty of being a family and being homeless, it's, uh, to me, the very thought is overwhelming. Uh, so we just, we are so, so pleased that uh, the shelter's providing this um, opportunity for families to have a roof over their head. You know, when they're homeless, oftentimes they're living in a vehicle. Right. And those little kids are still trying to go to school, still trying to have some normalcy in their life. So everything we do through the Magi Fund is for these two organizations. And anyone and everyone uh, that has a heart uh, to see people taken care of. Right. This is their opportunity to help come out, support the Magi Fund, support uh, the organizations through the purchase of a ticket, but you know they don't have to limit their giving to a $15, $10, I'm sorry, $20 ticket. Um, there, is huge, there are huge needs year-round with Joseph House Center and Christian Shelter. There's not a need too big or too small. They, they tackle them no matter what it is. Oftentimes, the Joseph House Center is simply trying to help uh, an individual or a family uh, from becoming homeless because 
they have an eviction notice or their utilities are being disconnected because they haven't had the funds to pay. Utility help is a big part of what they do. Very big, and that helps people uh, stay in homes, keeping folks from becoming homeless. And then, of course, there's the number of individuals that come to their doors with just a plethora of needs, whether it's for medicine, uh, transportation, whatever. I, I couldn't even begin to name all of the needs that they work to meet. And then also from uh, Joseph House, the Village of Hope spun off. Uh, and that was the first kind of thing where I saw like a, a program that like had like a business plan and made sense where I understood what the requirements of the program were and how the charity aspects of it and the self-help and uh, that's an amazing program as well. I know they have their clue caper in the spring which is their big fundraiser. Yes. Um, so that's been a successful right. offshoot of Joseph House. Sister uh, Mary Elizabeth was the founder of uh, Village of Hope. Uh, and just before she passed away, she realized one of her greatest dreams, and that was to have a long-term ministry for homeless men, to be able to take them off of the street and to provide an environment where they could be rehabilitated and become uh, functioning successful citizens again. And so Joseph's workshop was founded uh, and is running a tremendous ministry there today where homeless men uh, have the opportunity to come off the street, be housed, and then the whole person is ministered to. Uh, they work to help them uh, get off of, a, if they have an addiction problem, to get off of drugs or alcohol, whatever the need is. They begin to educate them both in uh, their social skills and uh, work skills that they can go out and get jobs. Uh, they do an amazing uh, job of helping these individuals and there are tremendous success stories from Joseph's workshop, uh, how people, lives have been turned around and individuals have been reunited with their families and have got jobs and are now are productive citizens. So that's another aspect of Joseph House. Uh, so people just, um, if, if everybody knew in this community the amazing work that's being done, uh, they, they would be surprised. And when you go down there and volunteer, you feel so much better about yourself and you have a, a nice a, a view of the community that you never had before. You know, every one of these individuals that we're talking about, they're no different than you and me. They've just had um, an unfortunate go wrong. circumstance in their life and it could happen to us. Uh, just as easily. So we can really thank God that we have the ability to do what we do. And, and that's really important for me to say because the Magi Fund truly is a God-inspired organization and everything we do, we do for the glory of God. Joseph House and Christian Shelter benefit from the finances. But Greg, I could write a book and tell people how we have seen God's hand work uh, in preparation for these choral festivals, how he has met the needs of the organization. We are an all-volunteer organization. We have no paid staff. We have no office. We are very untraditional. We work off of the uh, table in the dining room right. or the kitchen table. Uh, not one single person gets paid uh, for what happens. And so 100% of everything that we raise goes to the two organizations. And along the way, we established an endowment at the Community Foundation uh, for Joseph House Center and Christian Shelter. Uh, so we commit that every year, 20% of every dollar raised will go into that uh, endowment so that Joseph House Center and Christian Shelter will have funds uh, in perpetuity. So there has been an amazing thing happened over the last 24 years. Over $1.5 million raised uh, to wow. help Joseph House and Christian Shelter. And that sounds like a lot of money, but you know what? That's, if you divide that into the number of months that we've been doing right. this, it's a very small amount of money. So no matter how much uh, we were able to bring in at any one time, such as at the Coral Festival, the needs of those two organizations are really great. So we really have to stay busy all year round trying to uh, bring in some funds to help them with their ministries. Now, you won't admit this either, but in my paper this week, there's a nice photo of you uh, winning the uh, Frank Morris Humanitarian Award for the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. Um, it was quite an event on Friday, and I think you were the only person in the room who didn't know you were going to win. I was, I, I probably was one of the most stunned moments of my life. 
uh, <laughs> even with the Salisbury Award, you know, there was so much going on at the Coral Festival. Right. And it, was, uh, it was a very exciting moment. But, but, but this Friday, you're in a room of 400 people, and they call your name. <laughs> so what was interesting is that I'd forgotten to put it on my calendar, even though I'd been reminded a couple times. And on Thursday afternoon, when I was reminded once again that the event was taking place on Friday, I had to run to the phone and call and say, I forgot to send my check, may I please come? <laughs> and so... When I, I hope they argue with you and say, well, I don't know if we have room for you or not. <laughs> so when I, um, when I went to uh, the luncheon on Friday, that's always an exciting event. The Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore is such a fabulous organization. And Greg, the Magi Fund exists today because the Community Foundation gave us $1,500 that first year when the wow. whole idea of having a Magi fund and raising uh, funds for Joseph House and Christian Shelter was born. It was a $1,500 grant from the Community Foundation that got us established and got us um, going that first year. How so long ago was that? This is our 24th year. 24th year, wow. Yes. So the Community Foundation is very near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we love the work that they do here in the community. So yes, uh, a wonderful organization. And I was stunned, and I am still stunned and shocked that I was given that award. It is absolutely um, it's so the, It's the top and, volunteer nonprofit cheerleading award in our community. There's just nothing bigger. Right. Well, and the Frank Morris Humanitarian Award, Frank Morris was an amazing yeah, man. Way ahead of his time. And um, yes, I, I can't begin to say how, how impacted my life has been having received that award on yeah. Friday. I never and, knew Mayor Morris, unfortunately. I sort of knew him, but I never really knew him. But I really, I really mm -hmm. regret that I didn't get to know him. Just a terrific guy. Yes, he was. So Bonnie, I have to, I have to know, you, you have a successful life, you've been successful in business, you've dabbled in politics, you could do anything with your time. Why do you do all this? <laughs> you don't, I mean, you could be on a beach in the Bahamas right now. Why, why are you gearing up for the Magi Festival? Sometimes I think about all those things. Um, Greg, it is a call of my life. Honestly, I can tell you, the Magi Fund was born out of uh, an inspiration that the Lord spoke into my heart at a New Year's Eve a Christmas uh, service 25 years ago. I, I won't tell you the whole story here today, but I can tell you that God spoke to my heart so clearly. I walked out of a candlelight service knowing that I would... I was supposed to do something for Joseph House Center and Christian Shelter, and I didn't even know about those two. I'm, I knew the two organizations existed, but I had no involvement with them. I only knew about them, and yet I walked out of that service knowing that, that God was speaking to my heart, that I had a responsibility to do something. And everything I've done since has been really guided by, uh, by the Lord. And everybody that has come alongside, and believe me, this is not about Bonnie, Luna, this, as I said, thousands of individuals, and we've had a dedicated small group of uh, individuals that have served on the steering committee. Uh, we all feel that same call on our lives, and uh, we really are trusting every day uh, God to give us the guidance that we need to do these things. And right now, as we're approaching uh, November 18th and 19th, we're saying, God, it is all yours. Uh, we just pray that the people will come out, uh, that they will be blessed, that they will receive something from having been there, that they can take it away, they can hold it in their hearts and have it with them throughout the holiday season, but they can also share with others. So that's a long answer to your question, and forgive me, but I truly believe that um, that I have this responsibility and God has, has given me um, the strength, uh, the ability to do it, and I am absolutely humbled to be in, in his service. Could you ever have imagined it would be so impactful and it would go on so long and make such a difference? 
No, I thought it was going to be a one-year event. <laughs> I, I thought <laughs> when God gave me the, the uh, sort of inspiration to do it, I thought it was really a one-time, we'll, we'll raise some funds for Joseph House and Christian Shelter. You know, that very first year that we did the Magi Choral Festival, we planned it in probably about six weeks, and we only did one performance. It was on Saturday night. It sold out that first year. It was the most amazing event. And after that, of course, you know, that's how God works. We couldn't quit after that first year. <laughs> well, I remember we didn't even put anything in the paper about it because people couldn't, you put, put in the paper, and then they were hounding you for tickets, and there weren't any tickets. So yeah. it was almost better to keep it a secret. <laughs> it, was, it was that popular. Well, we, we really want uh, the people in Salisbury and your listening uh, area to know this is, this is a community event that no one should miss. Um, it's, it's special. It's very, there's something different about it. Yeah. If I can just tell you, one time uh, we had a young man, I, I think he was probably in his mid-30s, uh, came up to me after one of the concerts, and Sister Mary Elizabeth was still living, and we had done a check presentation, and um, Sister Mary Elizabeth had been out on the stage, and this young man came up to me after the concert. He said, you know, I don't know why I came here tonight except that my kid <laughs> was uh, in that choir. He said, and uh, something just changed about him. He said, but you know, when that sister walked out on that stage, I knew that God was here. That's the way it's been she for had a 24 thing. Yeah. years. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, tickets are available at Country House. Country House, all branches of First Shore Federal. Which there's like 11 of them, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Marty Neitz, a big supporter, president mm -hmm. of First Shore Federal. Yes, and the treasurer of the Magi Fund. Excellent. So, yes, folks can get tickets at all of the branches of First Shore Federal at the Country House. $15 um, early, and then they go up to how much? 20 20 And 20 also, bucks. <laughs> we're, we're offering tickets at the door. You know, we have, in spite of the fact that we have very large crowds, we have never turned anyone away at the door. Uh, so tickets will be available at the door for $20. I, it's, it's just something that um, I would encourage everybody to be a part of. You know, we have people that come from uh, all, the, all the states surrounding us. People come from as far away as Wilmington. Delaware. I have a huge number of tickets that I just mailed out yesterday all over the state of Delaware. People come from the eastern shore of Virginia, from as far away as Frederick and Gaithersburg, Maryland. Wow. I, I sent out a ticket order form to some place in Pennsylvania yesterday. I didn't even know where the place was in Pennsylvania. People travel for hours to get here on Saturday or Sunday uh, to be uh, a part of this Magi Choral Festival. So I would say to the folks here on the Lower Shore, and particularly in Salisbury, it's worth your $15, your $20, and your 10-minute drive uh, to, be, to be able to experience this amazing concert uh, and to be just a part of this community event. Bonnie, thanks for being here today. It is my joy always to be with you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of One on One right here on Pack 14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.